Well, this episode might be an all-timer just based on the handful of stories we're covering today. And just to tease you a bit, we've got, of course, Trump actually taking the stand during his fraud trial in New York City, where he, of course, made a complete fool of himself. Further proof that Speaker of the House Mike Johnson is a total weirdo, uh. <laughs> in addition to being a religious extremist. Oh, boy. Uh, the last remaining holdouts of the NFT art craze having their eyeballs melted by the very art they claim to love. And Orca destroying another boat. And a quick but wonderful update on George Anthony DeVolder Santos. But let's start with what is obviously the biggest story from the beginning of this week, and that is Trump on trial in New York City. And before we go any further, let's just jump ahead and show everyone the incredible courtroom sketch of the former president from Monday's appearance in the Manhattan Supreme Court. Looking good, sir. Yeah. So yeah, just keep that face in mind as we go through some of the reporting, transcriptions, and reactions from journalists, pundits, and Trump's own legal team. Because Monday was quite the circus, and a small sample of things to come. Yeah, remember, the Georgia case is supposed to be televised, so... Oh, baby. This one, Yeah. just reporters in the I'm room. tired hearing about all this shit secondhand. Yeah. Give me the juice. I need to see this man angry. This is must-see TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just... Just so we're all on the same page here, because Trump is facing multiple charges across different states and federally, this trial is the one where Trump and his organization are accused of committing financial fraud by artificially inflating Trump's assets by billions of dollars in order to secure better loans and insurance. Uh, the two fail sons, Trump Jr. and Eric, testified <laughs> last week, and their time in the courtroom consisted of them claiming to have never read any of the details on any documents presented to them for authorization, which means they're lying, uh, admitting that they are both incompetent businessmen or both. Yeah, it's probably Why not both? both. Yeah. Trump's testimony was similar, but featured a lot more of the narcissistic flourishes that he's known for, and assuming that he can just talk his way out of the situation by claiming that, of course, he's being unfairly victimized. Very unfair. In some cases, turning this legal testimony into just another angry rally speech. And since this was a court of law and not a rally, the judge and prosecutors were able to shut him down fairly quickly most of the time, but not before we got some wonderful gems out of the reporting and transcripts. And the reporting we'll be using to quote from is from NBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who was in the courtroom giving a play-by-play -play on the news organization's live blog platform as well as on Twitter. As usual, we're just going to point out some highlights and links to the entire coverage from multiple sources are always down in the description below. But here you go. Trump confirms he is the owner of all the assets in the trust and the beneficiary thereof. He says that around the time he won, he moved the Trump org into the trust to avoid conflicts of interest, although he maintains that he could have had two desks, as Washington did. He made Trump org CFO Alan Weisselberg a trustee because he had been with the company for a long time. He did a good job, and we really liked him. As for Don Jr., he was named as a trustee because he's a good boy, or man, and an honorable one. He's a good man boy. Mm -hmm. uh, she then points out that Kevin Wallace, who is leading the questioning for New York's Attorney General's office, asked Trump why he would restore himself as the sole trustee in 2021, only to then remove himself again by July of that same year. She points out that six days before Trump removed himself and put Don Jr. back in charge, the Manhattan DA indicted his CFO and the organization. Oh, whoops. No, I think, uh, I think I'm not in charge again. I think it's actually my son who's in charge now. This guy. Look, he's up to something. One I don't know. Them. You guys figure it out. It's the boys in charge. Yeah. He's a good boy. Or man. A few minutes into the testimony, Trump was already going off on tangents while avoiding direct questions, which caused Judge Arthur Engeron to insist Trump not turn his responses into speeches. And they get into the details of his properties, and he continues to parrot the talking point that he's been using for weeks now, which is that the properties are actually undervalued. Okay, interesting strategy here. Yeah, uh, so, quote, Do you remember thinking some of those valuations were off? On occasion, Trump said, Mar-a-Lago was very underestimated, but I left it alone because I didn't care. <laughs> I thought 40 Wall Street and Doral were underestimated as well. Trump is now complaining about the judge assessing the value of Mar-a-Lago at $18 million when it had a value of 50 to 100 times that. Mm. The apartment, he said, by contrast, he thought was overvalued, but it only takes one person to buy it. The most valuable asset was the brand value, and that wasn't on the statement, Trump digresses. 
If I wanted to build a statement to show how rich we really are, I would have included the brand value. I became president because of my brand. If I wanted to build up a statement because of my brand, all I would have to do is add brand value and my financial statement would be very, very substantial. And Ruben adds, spoiler, the golf courses were valued for years with brand premiums included. Okay. So he actually did do that. Yeah. And even with the brand premium added in, it still didn't add up to what he was claiming it was worth. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have assumed, yeah, that would be something they would factor in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, her reporting continues. Trump said the statements were not very important financially, and he discussed them with Weisselberg very little. He insists no developer he knows has done a financial statement so detailed and that so understates the value of his assets by a substantial amount. I cannot underscore how much this case visibly irks Trump. He is now attacking Wallace. Everybody got their money in full, and now you're assuming the statements are phony. John Jengeron, Mr. Keiss, one of Trump's lawyers, can you control your client? This is not a political rally. Maybe you should have a talk with him right now. Keiss disagrees and says it would be far more economical to let the former and future <laughs> chief executive of the United oh, States no. give his answers. Uh, the AGs go back and forth with Trump and his lawyer regarding specific properties and why their value was being inflated. Trump continues to either insist everything was undervalued or simply deflects and goes on a tangent, leading to this response from the judge aimed at Trump's lawyer, Christopher Keiss. I beseech you to control him. If you can't, I will. I will excuse him and draw every negative inference. This was explained... Uh, I will just assume... The worst. The worst. Yeah, this is explained like if... The uh, analogy for this would be if someone had incriminating documents and then just ripped them all up. Yeah. The, the court would have to assume that those were very incriminating because why else would you destroy them? Yeah. So sending him out based on this would be very bad for Trump. And this is when the sparks really started to fly with Trump's lawyers, uh, Keese and Alina Haba. Haba gets more aggressive. The burden is on the AG to ask better questions. Engeron. We are not here to hear what he has to say. We are here to listen to him answer questions. Haba pushes back. Yes, you are here to listen to what he has to say. Engrong reiterates he is here to listen to Trump answer questions and then loses his temper. Sit down. He instructs Wallace to continue, but not before Trump adds, this is a very unfair trial. Well, it sounds like he picked a legal team that really aligns with his uh, just everything. Yeah. And that's good. The questioning moves into loans that he took with Deutsche Bank, where one of the stipulations was that Trump would always have to have a net worth of over $2.5 billion. Okay. Got to make sure he's liquid, so yeah, in yeah. case these loans go into default, I mean, he has to be good for it. Right. Trump is now pontificating about the case again, noting it is a disgrace that is dissuading people from living in and doing business in New York. Mm. It's election interference because you want to keep me in this courthouse all day long. Wallace asks if it's Trump's position that the statements of financial condition do not inflate his assets. He won't answer directly, instead saying they were fully protected by disclaimers. So all this seems to be incredibly damning stuff, and honestly, it makes it obvious that while he was overseeing everything, he also had people in positions that would take the fall if and when the organization got into legal trouble. Yeah. Uh, not that it matters all that much because Judge Engren already passed summary judgment against Trump back in September, ruling that he did indeed defraud banks and insurers. Uh, the trial is focused on specific claims and the financial penalties that his organization will face. Mm -hmm. But the funniest moment from Trump's questioning on Monday had to be the point at which he, he claimed he was too busy with his presidential duties to properly review and file financial paperwork, despite not being president at the time that th that paperwork was submitted. And th this is an all-time Trump quote. Well, you know, mentally I was still president. They had a little desk set up for me in Mar-a-Lago and it looked just like the Oval Office. I could play my games. They even gave me the button that delivered a Diet Coke. And my button's very big. Mm -hmm. In a separate line of questioning Monday, Trump distanced himself from a statement of financial condition from 2021, claiming he was busy at the time keeping our country safe from the likes of China and Russia. I was so busy in the White House, Trump said. My threshold was China, Russia, and keeping our country safe. Just for the record, Wallace replied, you weren't president in 2021? No, I wasn't, Trump <laughs> acknowledged. No, no, you're right. No, I wasn't. Well, it depends who you ask. You know, I, mean, I was president I... in here, where it counts. The people's president. 
Yes. President in our hearts. Mm -hmm. The hearts of millions. But, whew, hey, let's just see that courtroom sketch once, once again. It's, it's pretty beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there were a few more clips from the circus over in Manhattan on Monday. So let's start with this one where, for maybe the first time, Trump actually kept his mouth shut when faced with a bunch of television cameras and microphones. Here you go. Huh. All right, wow. so Donald Trump there making that motion, zipping okay. his lips, not speaking, which is interesting in and of itself. Uh, yeah, and then once the day was over for him and the legal team, hey, let him off the chain, let him talk, Yeah. go nuts. Uh, but yeah, it was just more of the same, just calling the whole thing a scam, also claiming that he didn't even need to be there, despite him being called to testify. Turns out he did need to be there. Yeah, here's some, here's some clips. <laughs> scam this is. This is a case that should have never been brought. It's a case that should be dismissed immediately. The fraud was on behalf of the court. The court was uh, the fraudster in this case. They made references to assets that were very valuable and they said uh, they had no idea. They had no idea what the numbers were when they said $18 million for Mar-a-Lago and it's 50 to 100 times that amount. I don't have to be here for the most part, but I sort of do have to be here because I want to be here because it's a scam and this is a case that should have never been brought and it's a case that now should be dismissed. This is a sad, I think it's a very sad day for America. But anyway, this is a case that should have never been brought and it's a case that should be immediately dismissed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then also his lawyer faced the cameras to complain about how the judge was treating her while also misconstruing quotes that the judge made and even reiterated on the stand. I'm not here to hear what he has to say. Then why exactly am I being paid as an attorney and why exactly are taxpayer dollars being used in this courtroom? The answer is very clear. Because Miss James wants to stand right here like she did this morning and call my client a liar. You have a right to hire a lawyer who can stand up and say something when they see something wrong. But I was told to sit down today. I was yelled at, and I've had a judge who is unhinged slamming a table. Let me be very clear, I don't tolerate that in my life. I'm not gonna tolerate it here. Wow, it's, uh, again, great legal team he's assembled for this case. Yeah, I honestly just cannot wait till the Georgia case when we all get to sit around and watch live. Yeah, I mean, this one's fun, it's whatever. That one's, that one's real exciting. That's gonna be that's gonna be the television event of maybe the century. Yeah, this one's just based entirely on his ability to operate businesses. Yeah, this is just. I mean, it's, if, even if all of his businesses went away, he would still be a big problem. Right. So th this one, it's just it's just typical. It's white collar crime. Yeah. This the, the Georgia kind of, case and, and the DC case are. This guy is gonna go to jail and. Yeah. Fingers crossed, cannot legally run for president or any other elected well, office. We, uh, we don't have laws for that, so I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Um, it's all very interesting. Uh, Biden's polling is absolutely trash right now. Getting worse but, every day. But also, Trump's polling is terrible as well with, like, uh, a lot, like, basically a lot of people, there was one poll I saw where people were asked, like, wh who would you vote for? And then, okay, who would you vote for if Trump is found guilty in any of these cases? And it it shifts wildly back towards Biden in that case. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no one is going to be v happily voting for anyone yeah. in next year. It is wild that uh, every election cycle in a very long time has been the worst possible choices you could even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to shut up and, and do it. Shut, 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 shut your up. mouth and do it. Yeah, just come on. Come on. Stop being such a bitch. And if anything goes wrong, it is all your fault. Uh-huh. And it's our fault, but more specifically, everyone else's fault. Yeah. Government does not exist to serve you. You <laughs> exist to serve government. Ugh. Remember that. Know your place. Mm-hmm. But yeah, before we leave this part of the political world behind, we want to provide you with a, a brief but funny update on George Santos, who continues to demonstrate that he is physically unable to tell the truth in any scenario. And the latest train wreck interview with the congressman, who is currently facing multiple federal charges, 
once again broached the subject of his family's heritage. Oh, here we go again. As you're all aware by now, Santos claimed to be Jewish and that his grandparents actually fled the Holocaust. But he clarified late last year that he was merely Jewish. There is a difference, yes, a pretty big difference. Uh huh. Now he's trying to back up the original claims by indicating that he has gone to great lengths to prove his heritage by working with a genealogist who is evaluating his DNA. His DNA? <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, though, he has hit a snag. Oh, fiddlesticks. Because of the war in Ukraine. It, it has made the whole backtracing thing impossible. Whoops. Yeah. That's too bad. The embattled 35-year-old Republican revealed during an interview on CNN that he has spent the last 10 months evaluating his DNA and working with a genealogist to prove his claims about his heritage. That's something I'm gonna prove before I die, Santos told CNN's Manu Raju on Inside Politics in a segment that aired on Sunday, after noting he's yet to acquire the documentation. Unfortunately, Ukraine is in the middle of a freaking war, and my grandfather comes from Ukraine, he said. I'm working on finishing getting the last pieces of it. He continued about proof his family fled the Holocaust, specifically the piece where they go to Brazil and then have documents forged. Once I have everything ready, I will allow the same company hired to submit the report to the press with glee. Okay. Uh, I have this great report. You can't see it. You can't see it. Until the war in Ukraine is over. But also, when you do see it, it's going to rip the... It's so funny that he's doing this because, like, that is the least of his problems. Yeah, it's it's very low on the list. Even of... if he does manage to somehow prove that he has a certain percentage of like Ashkenazi DNA, buddy, you are looking at like twenty five uh, serious counts of crimes. Yes. N- well, no sir, one, you are free to go. The 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 being the fake Jewish thing that was that was a funny little like prologue to the rest of your bullshit. Yes. But we've all kind of forgotten about it. Yeah, he is. Uh... It's trying to exonerate himself on this one. That way it proves that the other crimes yeah. are based on false information as well. We need to get Henry Louis Gates on the case. We need an episode of Finding Your Roots with yeah. George Santos. Uh, unfortunately, nothing can be done because of that pesky war in Ukraine. That's too bad. Alas. And, uh, any minute now it's going to be over with and we're going to get all that information and we're going to gleefully hand it over to the press. Any day. By the way, it's a company that I hired and am working with directly yeah. who they refuse to tell any lies. They told me personally. I so. mean, if it's just DNA, can't he just take a fucking 23 and me? Uh, well, it's not that easy because you see the war in Ukraine. And that's uh-huh. where his grandfather's from. Uh-huh. Okay. But if they went from Ukraine to Brazil, no, I Elliot. bet you could probably look around Brazil, a country <laughs> that is not at war, Elliot. and maybe, maybe that would help. Typical stuff. leftist gotcha tactics out of Elliot's mouth. <laughs> Don't worry, the homework will arrive uh-huh. when the war is over. Okay. So just sit tight, everyone. Uh, I'm waiting with bated breath. This, when he's, when and, when, he's, and, and once he proves this, this will change everything. everything. Yes. He definitely, yeah. by the time the Ukrainian war is over, won't be already out of Congress and potentially serving time for his various crimes that have nothing to do with lying about his family's heritage. Well, that war might be over. He, he seems to be banking on this war never ending, yes. but that war <laughs> might actually, in the past month, the, uh, there, there's definitely been a shift in messaging on that mm-hmm. where they're like, ah, oh, shit, sorry, Zelensky. I'm done playing with you. You're kind of like, you're, we told you you are our number, number one, but you're... Actually, they're number two. No, it's literally Israel's our number one, and they need billions of dollars for some fucking reason. It's the Andy they, from Toy Story <laughs> meme. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, they're now. I guess it's none of this is like confirmed, but there's you know, sources. So like they're talking about like, hey, maybe you make a deal, which is kind of fucked up because that deal's kind of been on the table for a year. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have died in the meantime. Yeah, it's obviously not the. It's not the conclusion most people want. No. But uh, yeah, it would be. Well, it would be kind of fucked up. The the one good thing about that is if it happens, then we will finally know whether or not George Santos right. is Jewish or Jewish. Maybe that's why they're trying to finally wrap this thing up. Yeah. Hey, we got important things that need to happen in Ukraine, and this war is getting in the way. So can you please, uh, I don't know, figure it out? Yeah. Well, we'll, we will keep you updated on both the war in Ukraine and George Santos' family tree. Yeah. 
Anyways, we have more coming up for you in just a second, including, oh baby, an NFT festival. Yep, those are still happening. An NFT festival that you can't see to believe. Yeah, that's right. And we'll explain why. But first, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Henson Shaving. And of course, I have an annoying facial hair issue, as you're probably aware. All my facial hair grows in spotty, if at all. I've tried everything to make it less annoying, including uh, electric razors, but the nicks, the cuts, and the irritation, they made me feel like I was some scrub, constantly learning how to shave for the very first time. And you're saying to yourself, Ricky, your face looks a bit hairy right this second. Well, you're right. You're right. But that's because I shaved with my Henson razor on Saturday, and I haven't even thought about shaving since. It was so smooth, I was convinced the hair was never going to grow back. <laughs> so I came straight to the office today, not a care in the world. Uh, but I, I assure you that it works. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble. The more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is, that's not a lot. That is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. And it gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. And this is a damn good, high quality razor. It's got weight to it. Yes. And uh, and you're not is... gonna be blowing the bit. It's literally, these are standard. This is like what your grandpa used. Yep. Before you can big buy razor. Real cheap. Yeah, you can. They, mm -hmm. uh, a year's supply is dollars. Yeah. The Henson razor works with standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefits of new school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about three to five dollars per year to replace the blades. Honestly, I do. I love this razor mainly because it is infinitely reusable. It gets the job done extremely well, and I'm not contributing to more plastic pollution in the process. It uh, also, like they said, ridiculously cheap to refill over time, and it's always fun to reject modernity and embrace tradition. Yeah. So. Uh, it's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash ITDaily to pick the razor for you and use our code ITDaily and you'll get two years worth of blades for free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart all together to get the deal. That's a hundred free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash ITDaily and use our code ITDaily. Remember, you get a Package them together. Info is in the description. And we told you how to spell it, so there you go. No excuses. Anyway, back to the news now. And uh, every day that goes by brings us a new and fascinating look into the very weird life of our new Speaker of the House, Republican Mike Johnson of Louisiana. And today is no exception because a recent video was uncovered where Speaker Johnson, before he was Speaker Johnson, uh, talks about what appears to be a uh, pornography addiction. Mm -hmm. Apparently a serious one, yeah. and uh, how he and his his son help one another uh, by keeping an eye on each other's porn intake. So to be clear, the son that he's talking about in the resurfaced clip is not the son, it's not the teenage son that he uh, adopted when he was in his mid-twenties and single. That's a thing he did? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the clip, uh, he's talking about his biological son who is now a teenager. Mm -hmm. He's talking about jerking off with his teenage son. That's, that's one way to put it, I guess. No, clearly him and his teenage son are just monitoring each other's porn intake to make yeah. sure they, just a little bit of porn. It's totally, you know, it's, you're the weird one. Yeah, dad, what's gooning? Uh, here's Rolling Stone with the story on this. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson admitted that he and his son monitored each other's porn intake in a resurfaced clip from 2022. During a conversation on the War on Technology at Benton, Louisiana's Cypress Baptist Church, unearthed by ex-user Receipt Maven last week, the Louisiana representative talked about how he installed accountability software called Covenant Eyes <laughs> on his devices in order to abstain from internet porn and other unsavory websites. Under his eye. It scans all the activity on your phone or your devices, your laptop, what have you. We do all of it. 
Johnson told the panel about the app, it sends a report to your accountability partner. My accountability partner right now is Jack, my son. He's 17. <laughs> so he and I get a report about all the things that are on our phones, all of our devices, once a week. If anything objectionable comes up, your accountability partner gets an immediate notice. I'm proud to tell you, my son has got a clean slate. My son has never masturbated. He's got empty balls. Full balls. Well. Clear eyes, full balls, can't come. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, look, this is weird in every aspect. Uh, this is uh, something that is apparently pretty standard in the extreme religious right, but also it, it it's one thing, the very weird aspect that people are latching onto online of, yeah, it's weird that his son is aware of his porn habits. It's also far more weird to get immediate alerts about what your son, your teenage son might be doing. Yeah, I don't like this, but I'll, I, honestly, like the weirdness aside, this app sounds like a cybersecurity nightmare. It is, it <laughs> is, and that was pointed out. Uh, outside of being, yeah, totally fucking weird at face value, it also clearly opens up the current speaker of the house to being compromised by yeah. having the most intimate details of his life and what appears to be unfettered access to his devices monitored by an app run by an evangelical Christian organization. Once again from the article, a U.S. congressman is allowing a third-party tech company to scan all of his electronic devices daily and then uploading reports to his son about what he's watching or not watching. Receipt Maven wrote, I mean, who else is accessing that data? Since he was elected Speaker of the House in October, Johnson's history as a faith-obsessed, election-denying far-right Christian nationalist has come under the microscope from his time with the anti-LGBTQ organization Alliance Defending Freedom to his claim that school shootings could be blamed on abortion and teaching evolution. Yeah, just bizarre stuff. It's kind of like, uh, without all the cybersecurity stuff, which is Actually, the national security yeah, threat here. that is a big problem. Uh, outside of that, he, it's almost like the sketch from I Think You Should Leave with between the doctor and the patient. They're like, hey, notice your heart rate's up. Yeah. Uh, you didn't happen to go out to this club haunted house, did you? No, I'm just jerking off. <laughs> All right, well, if you do go to Club Aqua, I would love to come. Yeah. Actually, I might like to go to Club Haunted House more than Club Aqua. <laughs> it's a good sketch. It is a good sketch. Um, one, of, uh, one of many good sketches. That's for sure. But yeah, just totally fucking bizarre and ultra controlling and weird. I'm curious about how this app works. I'm sure like, that what there's, is a, the there's a bunch of website URLs that are probably fed into it. Yeah. By the way, this is the same app that uh, that dude from the Duggar family used. The one who's like in prison now yes. for sex crimes yes. against children? Yeah. Uh, and also hmm. uh, um, Lamar Odom, the basketball player. Like, yeah, I had to kick my porn addiction, so. I mean, he, he probably does need that. That man yeah. has problems. Yeah. He's got a lot of addictions. And he wasn't using it to monitor someone else, which, again, I get to, like, the privacy issue of your teenage but grown son and having access to all of his data is nuts. Yeah, I... But again, this I, is just one of the many weird things about this guy. It would be weird if they were just people living yeah this is the speaker of the house yeah what are you doing what's going on yeah well cool that's great anyway now for the story that everyone who still uses twitter tagged us in over the past 48 hours or so and it's a good one mm -hmm. a bunch of nft dorks went to an nft dork convention where the production lighting caused Many people to go blind and develop burns on their bodies. Wow. Honestly, if you wrote a fictional retelling of the history of crypto with a chapter about how NFT owners went blind after attending a digital art event, it would be considered too obvious of a joke. Yeah. Yet here we are. And for the few, the proud, the remaining Bored Ape holders, um, that's what happened during a Bored Ape event in Hong Kong this past weekend. And with more on this big dumb story full of big dumb now Semi-blind people. <laughs> Here's 404 Media. Attendees at a conference for Bored Ape NFT owners are reporting waking up in the middle of the night following laser and blacklight heavy performances with extreme eye pain and vision loss. Yuga Labs, the parent company of Bored Ape Yacht Club, hosted Ape Fest in Hong Kong from November 3rd to the 5th. 
The event was open to holders of Board Ape NFTs, a crypto project that peaked in 2021 and recently crashed to a two-year low, costing many investors thousands of dollars. Quote, I woke up at 4 a.m. and couldn't see anymore. Had so much pain and my whole skin is burning. My whole skin. <laughs> Needed to go to the hospital, one attendee posted on the last day of the event. The doctor told me the UV of the lighting of the stage did it. It has the same effect as sunlight. Still cannot see normally. Quote, same here for me and plus one. I had eyeglasses, so was a bit spared, but skin is burned and plus one had the same degree of issues with eyes, someone replied. The toilets may have been great, what? but what happened to our eyeballs last night at ApeFest? Another attendee wrote as a follow-up to a photo of him sitting on a toilet with his pants around his ankles <laughs> in a room bathed in intense black lights. Been to lots of concerts, festivals, Burning Man, and never have I ever experienced fucked up eyes like this. Board Ape Yacht Club acknowledged the issue in a post early Monday morning. Apes, we are aware of the eye-related issues that affected some of the attendees of ApeFest and have been proactively reaching out to individuals since yesterday to try and find the potential root causes, the official account tweeted. Based on our estimates, we believe that much less than 1% of those attending and working the event had these symptoms. While nearly everyone has indicated their symptoms have improved, we encourage anybody who feels them to seek medical attention just in case. One of the funnier moments from the festival, aside from all the blind people, was the fact that in numerous videos from the event, there doesn't seem to be a woman in sight. Yeah. I'm curious who that plus one was. Anyway, yeah, they, uh, uh, someone figured out just from photos of this event that um, the tube lights all over this, uh, this pop-up nightclub scene um, I, I guess there was a mix up cause you know, you see black lights at clubs and sure, stuff like that. Are. Looks like them. Um, black lights are not the same as UV lights. Uh, they, I mean, visually they're both purple. They're in the ultraviolet spectrum sort of, uh, UV lights is you are looking at the sun. Yeah. In fact, you were looking at multiple suns. And they put these things fucking everywhere. It's like they lit the event with uh, the like a tanning booth. Yeah, tanning array. booth, like weed growing setup. Yeah. Um, oh, you guys want hydroponic lights? Like the, you can literally get fucking cancer. Yeah. From this well, shit. Well, and go blind and be burned. Yeah. No, it's really bad, and it's like fascinating to me because like uh, I've, I've actually been around these lights before, and you, can you hurt your eyes within like a second of even having them in now, your vision. I, I'm sure that this was like, look, this has to be the brightest fucking festival you've ever seen. These people are digital art fanatics. None of that boring, soft bullshit. These things have to literally melt your eyeballs. That's how powerful these apes are. But like, that's the thing is like, the, the crazy thing about UV is it's, it's outside of, or mostly outside of like the human visual spectrum. So they don't look bright but they are bright. You just can't see most of the brightness. Well, there was something lost in translation. Uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, it's like really, really bad. Yeah. I almost feel bad for these people. No, it's uh, it's it's just fulfilling the prophecy of the laser eyes crypto But thing. yeah, I mean, ima <laughs> imagine paying like $100,000 for a JPEG you can't even look at anymore because the people who made that JPEG blinded you at the one of the only exclusive events that you've been able to get into with the yeah. purchase of that ape also they're saying like one percent we saw what like five or six people yeah it's so, not one percent yeah that no. and like, based on our estimates okay yeah, yeah I mean, that you can just say whatever you want yeah maybe there was like i don't know a couple maybe a couple hundred people at this party that might even be stretching it yeah so and not a woman in sight mm -mm. no sir just just uh you know board ape yacht club is for the boys. The blind boys. For the blind boys. Yep. Finally today though, after at least a few days since our last story about orcas attempting revenge on humans for the irreparable harm we've done to the planet, we finally have some more orca news. They're back at it again. This time they've targeted a pleasure cruise filled with tourists in what might be the most brazen and destructive act yet. Here's Metro with the latest. Killer whales have struck again in Spain as a tourist yacht sank following a 45-minute horror attack. The shell-shocked crew of a Polish tourist yacht have told how they survived a terrifying 45-minute attack by a pack of killer whales in Spain but could not save their boat from devastating damage. The attack, 
one of many reported in the waters around Spain, happened in the Strait of Gibraltar in the early afternoon of October 31st. It has been revealed spooky. The boat, operated by the company Morsky Mile, later sunk, but all the crew survived. Uh, I have skepticism about this because, like, this is a Polish boat we're talking about. They, um, you know, they, they probably had a screen door on it, it somewhere. Is, it is possible this boat just sort of sank. <laughs> it just sank on its own. Yeah. And they had to come up with an excuse for insurance purposes. Oh, no, we can't even see anything because all of our flashlights are solar powered. <laughs> anyway, it continues. <laughs> Recalling the horror incident on board the Grazi Mama 2. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom, too. <laughs> the tourist company said in a statement, on October 31st, 2023, in the Strait of Gibraltar, in the early afternoon, our yacht was attacked by a pack of killer whales. They hit the rudder blade for 45 minutes, causing major damage and a leak. Despite attempts to bring the yacht to port, made by the captain, the crew, and rescuers from the SAR, port tugboats, and the Moroccan Navy, the unit sank near the entrance to the Tangier Med port. The crew is safe and sound in Spain. Um, yeah, to your point, this is a perfect scenario for anyone trying to do a little insurance fraud. These orcas, ah, geez, you know, <laughs> straight to Gibraltar, they're at it again. There's, oh, boy. I'm sure at least a couple of people who have undocked their boats from Miami that they used, they bought with all of their COVID money. Yeah. And now they're sailing straight to the, uh, the Strait of Gibraltar so that, oops, oh, no, I hope no orcas attack my boat and sink it. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Uh, for their part, Poland will be bombing the entire ocean to make sure that these yeah, orcas I mean, it's what it, are brought to justice. What do you expect? Yep. Every orca must die. Mm -hmm. They're all terrorists. Uh, I condone the actions of the orcas. Or as Selena Gomez would say, I don't like when any bad things happen ever. Uh, Selena, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you want, just probably the craziest recent episode of Weekly Weird News that we've done in a while. Please. And <laughs> disgusting. It just, it just, just gross. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to take a shower after that episode and a clean shave afterwards, too. But it, it presents some really interesting questions that you have to ask yourself. Uh, and a lot of people did side with me over the... Uh, I saw so, someone did a poll, and at one point there was like hundreds of votes, and it was still perfectly 50 <laughs> 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, please make sure you watch that video. And of course, we have another episode of News Dump over there for you. We'll be back with more news later in the week. In the meantime, like the video, do it. I forgot to say it before please, the other videos. Please hit the bell, hit leave the bell. a comment, like the video, do it right now. Thank you. I you, appreciate you it. You did it. I saw it, and I'm. I'm very grateful. Leave a comment below and stay tuned for our next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.